If you're looking to buy a new car here in Europe right now, you'll find many cars just around and a little bit above the 30,000 euro mark. You'll get a nice crossover with an automatic trunk, five different driving modes, and maybe if you're lucky, even massage seats. But to be honest, nobody really needs all these things, especially if you're on a budget. This Kia Rio here just behind me probably fulfills the needs of 95% of all car buyers, doesn't break the budget, and at the same time, has pretty much everything you need in a new car. Let's take a brief look at the exterior of the fourth generation Kia Rio. And to be honest, I configured this XI car the day prior to receiving it on Kia's online configurator. And I wasn't too stoked on the looks, but upon seeing it in person right now, I must say, I actually really like the design. The white paint works really well with the GT Line's black, black accents. And I really like the 17 inch wheels we get on this one. Probably the one of my favorite wheels so far in a press car. Additionally, the GT Line gives us sportier side skirts and dual exhaust pipes in the back. Might be a bit overkill with this car to be honest, but hey, at least it's real exhaust pipes. <laughs> and now onto the interior of the Kia Rio, and I must say I really like it, especially considering the price one. Uh, our seats are mixed fake leather and cloth, and pretty comfortable, and we've got some nice accents. We've got metal on the doors, and we've got carbon, fake carbon, on the dash, like all across the dashboard. And if you know me, I absolutely hate carbon in the interior, be it real or be it fake. But this one actually looks good and I like it because it's it's textured so I've got some nice reflections and it feels better and it, and it adds a nice design note, let's say like that, to the interior and refreshes it. Also we've got very, very little piano black in the exterior, uh, interior, pardon. You know, uh, piano black looks gross always. You can clean it and after two seconds it's full of dust and fingerprints and just really gross but they used it so little just around the air vents and just above and below the infotainment screen which isn't too bad I don't touch any of these areas so it looks actually good and it's it's not gross <laughs> thank you Kia and speaking of infotainment we got the same infotainment we also had in the i30 and so it's shared between Hyundai and Kia and it's a good system it's really fast it does all you want and of course Apple CarPlay Android Auto is, in, is integrated so you can use Google Maps if you want to no reason to use Apple Maps, honestly. <laughs> anyway, um, infotainment is good, and while we're speaking of i30N, we also got the same steering wheel controls, uh, which are also very good. Uh, matte plastic, so no glass black or anything. It's not gross, it looks good. And we've got our media controls on the left side, so I can shift while driving and change my radio station or whatever I want. Thank you, that's thought out. I, I hate it when it's on the right side. And we've also got a USB slot in the front and one in the back, so even your rear passengers can charge their phones if they want to while driving. And one more little thing, the key actually, while I don't think it's beautiful, I've seen nice keys for cars, this one is it, but it's actually quite functional because on many, many cars, if you don't drive them like 30 weeks at a time, uh, you don't really know which button does what. So when you when you got it in your pants and you just like, I don't know, 20 feet, feet away from your car and you want to lock it, you have no idea which key it is and you have to, which button it is, and you have to pick up the key and look at it. But because the lock button is the big circle one in the, in the top, you always know which one it is. So that's pretty good. Don't have to take my key out of the pockets to know which one it is. Okay, so let's go for a quick drive in the Kia Rio to end this video. And um, first of all, the first thing you are going to notice when you drive this car is that this manual transmission is so absurdly easy to use. Um, I've never sat in a car that has a manual that is so easy to use. It's incredible. Um, you really don't have to do anything right. Even if you like purposely try to do it wrong or like not completely correct, let's say it like that, you don't want to destroy the transmission. But anyway, <laughs> it just it just works. I don't know how, but it's good. So if you don't know how to drive manual, this is probably the easiest car ever to learn it in. And this car is available in an automatic transmission. But honestly, even if you can't drive manual, buy it in a manual. First of all, cars with like 118 horsepower aren't fun with an automatic transmission. You can drive this like somewhat sporty with a manual, but you can't with the, with the automatic. And trust me, if you can't drive a manual, there you have friends or family members or somebody from Reddit or whatever. I'm pretty sure that you'll find someone that will help you um, get to know how to drive manual, you're not gonna regret it. Hashtag save the manuals, and you're gonna have more fun, trust me. Um, it's, it's super easy to learn in this car. Anyway, more into driving in this car. We've got a one liter turbo four cylinder, so fuel economy is actually pretty good. I've averaged 6.4 liters 
per 100 kilometers and last 1,100 kilometers I drove this car. Um, might not sound like a lot, by the way, US, UK conversions on the screen somewhere to your MPGs. Um, might not sound like that much, but you have to consider that I was driving, I this isn't economical driving at all. Like, this includes doing 200 kilometers an hour on the Autobahn. This includes driving rather zippily, I'd say. Um, in the city, this includes like accelerating hard stuff. So you can definitely get it under six, probably like 5.5, 5.6 liters per 100 kilometers. It should be possible in this car. Also, when you drive this car, what you're going to notice is that there is both turbo lag and throttle response that isn't quite that fast. So I'll just show you, we go, we leave the little town we're in right now. I am fourth gear, 1,500 RPM, 45 kilometers an hour, let me just floor it. Now we've got the turbo spooler. So, first of all, um, a bit of throttle response uh, isn't, isn't great. It's not the worst I've had so far, like by no means uh, the worst one I had, Opel, Vauxhall so far. Uh, I didn't like that. But here, here it is definitely okay, you can live with it. Probably most people won't notice it, but it's just a thing you maybe want to consider if your drive is a bit sporty. It's, it's not a problem at all, just, just thought I'd notice it, uh, I'd, I'd tell you. Uh, it's the only problem if you like want to rev match. You have to consider, okay, it takes a bit of time, you can't just blip it, you have to hold it a bit for it to actually go up in the revs. But, like I said, a lot of turbo lag, like, sometimes one or two seconds where nothing happens, and then the turbo kicks in, and then you got the power, so... If you want to drive this, or just accelerate, really gotta, like, rev all the rev it out, go high in the gears, otherwise you won't have that much power. Uh, but other than that, 180 horsepower is okay for this car, so it's adequate. You don't, uh, you don't want to have less power than this, but it's definitely enough to get you through, uh, through traffic, accelerate and all. Like I said, it is 200 kilometers an hour, this car, so that's fine. Yeah, while well, we're driving hard, a lot of body roll, but it doesn't really matter. It's, it's to be expected. It's an, econ it's an economy car, after all, so uh, you don't expect any, I don't know, corner covering heroics or something. <laughs> so that's okay. And yeah, it's pretty much it about this car. There's not much else to say, to sum it all up. We got a car that is pretty cheap, still has a lot of features. We got heated seats, heated steering wheels and so on. So uh, definitely a lot of features will, for the price we pay. And you also have to consider this is a Kia. That's a positive because Kias are incredibly reliable, just like all South Korean and Japanese brands. These guys know how to make a reliable car. So it probably won't break on you, even if you if you like beat the car. But even if it does break down for some reason, you still have a seven-year warranty here in Germany. I don't know about the warranty in like UK, USA, something like that. But in Germany, you have seven-year warranty. So even if something was to break, you'd still have the warranty and you'll be fine. Another thing to consider probably at the price is that many cars don't have warranty this high. So you might pay less in the beginning, but you'll pay more in app maintenance. It's also easy to work on this car. Like everything is accessible. So if you want to do your own work, you're good with this car. Yeah, uh, basically that sums it up for this car. If you've got any more question, questions, just put them down in the comments. Uh, you'll find more videos like me doing 200 kilometers accelerating on the Autobahn in this car in the top right hand corner, the little eye symbol. I'll upload more reviews soon. So why not subscribe? And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked it and I hope I'll see you in the next one, bye. And one more little thing, the key actually. There is it, there. If you're looking to buy a new car here in Europe right now, you'll find many cars just around in a little bit of a 30,000, 30, yeah, thousand, thousand, I'm the German. <laughs>